Hello and welcome to the Department of Literacy, Culture, and Language. My name is Chanel Stickles. I'm the Student Services Support in the Department and I will be walking you through the orientation PowerPoint that will provide you with information and helpful tips um, to start your program. This is our department chair. Her name is Mary Beth Hines. Um, she has been the department chair since the beginning of the year. She has been a department chair um, in previous years, um, but if you need to get in contact with her, um, just send her an email directly to set up an appointment. This is the Dean of the School of Education. His name is Lamel Watson. Um, he just started this semester um, and so we'll have to see what exciting things that he does, uh, will do for the School of Education. We currently do not have a department administrator, but any of the items that you see listed, um, if you need assistance with, you can feel free to contact me and I can see what, um, what we can do and who to contact, um, if you need any of those help with any of those items. Like I said, my name is Chanel Stickles. Um, my office is in 3044. I handle admissions, course permissions, um, any of your paperwork for your program. Um, if you need to send an email out to our distribution list, um, I also assist with travel. I also have two amazing graduate assistants in my office. Sari and Simon, um, they help answer phones as well as emails. So um, don't be surprised if you see um, them responding or answering the phone if you don't get me directly. And here are our images. Now we are going to go through um, the faculty within our department. So in the uh, program area of elementary education, um, these faculty teach undergrad as well as graduate courses. Starting from the left, we have Donna Adamat, Carmen Medina, Sharon Daly, Mitzi Lewison, and Karen Woolwin. In our language education program area, we have Seraphine Gordon Molina, Martha Nikos, Farida Pawan, and Beth Samuelson. In our secondary program area, we have our chair, Mary Beth Hines, and Stephanie Power Carter. In our content literacy, we have James D'Amico, and in the English education, we have Ray Smith. So just some general information. Since you're online students, you may not necessarily, you know, come to the office, but all of our faculty mailboxes um, are located in my office. If you need, um, something signed or um, need something uh, put in a faculty mailbox, you can feel free to email LCLE or me directly. Um, my e uh, email address is chsturge at indiana.edu. We primarily um, send emails out to your IU email. It's the, uh, it's what the university requires from us. Um, so if you have any issues with your email, uh, feel free to contact Hewitt's and we can talk about that in a little bit, that department, but, um, make sure you're checking your email, um, to make sure you, you know, we send out emails through our department listserv, as well as if you, you know, have emails from your advisor or, um, from the registrar's office. So, like I said, we have a department listserv. Um, we should already be currently added to it. We automatically do that when you accept admission. If for some reason you don't want to be on our department listserv, feel free to email me or email LCLE and we can get you removed. But I, we do send out helpful information, um, job listings, um, anything that we get from other departments we send out through the department listserv. So, on the School of Education website, there is a graduate portal. Um, I, here's a screenshot of it. 
um, on the on the PowerPoint. So all of your forms for your program will be on there. Um, there's also under the important links, there's a, a GEM student view that you can view um, paperwork like the status or um, if a if you know you're waiting on something, uh, the status, um, you can view things through there. This is also where the ePOS is located under the important links. I highly recommend doing that since you're an online student compared to the paper version. That way you don't have to get physical signatures from your faculty member. It'll just automatically send it to them via email and it's a lot easier to get approvals and to track it that way. The academic bulletin is also located um, on the graduate portal. So if you have really specific questions about the program, you can um, find information there as well as, you know, the course requirements um, is also listed on there. So some general tips and tricks. Um, you know, if you're not sure about something, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I'd rather you ask than just assume something because, you know, you, you could, you know, affect your graduation or, you know, the different steps within your program. So feel free to email, call, you know, if you're in Bloomington, you can feel free to stop by the office. Um, just make sure that you definitely ask um, either us, the department, or, you know, like your faculty advisor. We recommend that you save all of your syllabi from your courses, whether it's a paper version or electronic version. Um, you never know if you're gonna need it in the future, whether you're, you know, you're attending another college or transferring courses, anything like that. Just make sure that you keep a copy of that. Um, any of your student paperwork, make sure that you save a copy of it. Um, we do have a student folder in our office with all of your paperwork that we take to the graduate studies office or um, any, you know, admissions information we keep in your uh, student folder, but also keep uh, a copy for yourself. Just remember that, you know, you have to be your own advocate so just make sure um, that you keep, you know, copies of, of everything. And just make sure you know your degree requirements. Um, you can always see that information on the School of Education website as well as the academic bulletin. Um, just make sure you realize when courses are being offered um, through the registrar's website. Um, it can definitely help you out while you're trying to fill out your program of studies as well. So some important milestones um, to throughout your program is to always talk to your advisor, especially about what classes to take. If you can transfer in credits, um, they'll have to approve that. So just make sure you're either emailing, calling, setting up an, an appointment with them. I know some of them also do Skype. So um, if you're not sure who your advisor is, just get in contact with me and I can provide uh, your contact information. Your advisor is also not set in stone. So for some reason, if you're, you know, not communicating well or, you know, your research interests are with, you know, another faculty member, you can contact me as well and we can um, get the, the process rolling in, in for changing advisors. Um, just make sure you know where all the, the program forms are um, on that student portal that I showed you earlier. Um, your goal is to try to complete your program of studies by the end of your first year, just so that you have, it's kind of a, a contract of what you're planning to take um, as you move forward. It's, it it's, doesn't have to be, um, you know, set in stone. You can always change your program of studies. But it is helpful uh, for you to determine, you know, how many credits you're going to take and when you're going to take it. Um, so make sure you talk to your advisor about that. And any paperwork 
that needs to be turned into the graduate studies has to go through our office. Um, and if you need a signature from the chair, that also can go to me and then we can take it, uh, the department can take it down for you. Um, and then also make sure you're aware some of the um, documents that you can, that you need to complete are e-doc instead of paper. So just make sure you're aware of what you need to submit. Student Central is an amazing resource for you. They can help you with financial aid, when to register, like different fees. Unfortunately, the department can't always see financial information. Um, so I, I definitely recommend you contacting them. Um, I know, I, I believe that they have a chat that you can do um, through their site as well as, you know, giving them a phone call or sending them an email. Okay, registration. So most of you should have already tried to, you know, register for classes. Um, if you have issues, you can contact us. Just make sure that anytime you need permission, um, it'll say, you know, you need to permission from the department or a specific person. So make sure you're reading those class notes um, for courses that you need to take. Because sometimes if it's outside of the department, you'll have to contact that department specifically. Like I'm not going to be able, unfortunately, to provide permission for you. Um, and then when you send a permission to me directly, make sure um, you have your name and your university ID, what section of the course that you need. Um, and then sometimes if you have to take like an independent study or some of the higher end um, courses, I will need an email from your faculty advisor stating they give you permission for the course, especially if you're doing working with them directly. Um, I will need something in writing from them. Um, also remember that I can't, or you won't get an email notification once the permission has gone through. I usually respond to the email that you send to me if um, stating that I provided you permission. Um, you can also view the permissions in um, your student account, which you can uh, log on through uh, at one.iu.edu. So just make sure um, you check that because you won't be able to move forward unless you have the permission. So for, if for some reason it's not working, feel free to send the department an email. Like I said, if you don't know who your advisor is, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, you'll have to make an appointment with them directly. The department doesn't um, keep a calendar of the faculty. And if for some reason you need to look up their uh, phone number or email address, all of that is located in the directory on the School of Education website. UITS is um, IU support center for technology. Um, let's say you're having computer issues or you're using Zoom and you need some assistance. They have, uh, you can call them uh, with the phone number listed or email, or you can chat with them. I also recommend using um, it's called knowledge base. You can pretty much type in a question and it will give you uh, items to help you with your situation. Um, and I mean, I use that a lot, so it's definitely a, a great resource if you're not sure about something. And I've also listed the hours that they're uh, available. Um, if you need assistance, um, on, there's an online writing support um, so if you need help, you know, brainstorming or you're working on a rough draft, um, you need to revise something, feel free to go through, um, go to the website, um, at the bottom. It is through IU East, um, but they have excellent, um, people that you can contact and it's free. So. 
IU does have some technology that you can download for free. Um, I've included um, where you can go. If you go to one.iu and search IU Wear, you'll sh you should be able to pick it up. Um, and most of the time, if you're going to have a meeting, either like with the department or with the faculty or for a class, IU uses, uh, it's called Zoom. Um, it's very easy to use. You should be able to sign in uh, with your username and password. Um, you can record meetings. Um, it's it's very versatile, so I would definitely uh, definitely recommend um, getting familiar with with Zoom. So as an IU student, even being online, you still can get um, an IU ID, which is called a Crimson card. Um, it I know it provides like. Being a student sometimes can provide you with discounts and um, different uh, privileges. So there is um, an online student uh, request form. Unfortunately, you won't have a photo on your card, um, but you'll still be able to get the same kind of privileges uh, for being an IU student with your Crimson card. The IU... Um, library has um, distant education services. Um, if you are needing a certain book, they can mail it to you. Um, but I've included some, the contact person is Michael Courtney. So I've included um, his email address and um, some, uh, you know, other contact information for them um, to get, to get, uh, you know, if you have questions or want to learn more about it that information is listed. So in our department, we do have some certificate programs. Um, the one that's online is the EFL ESL. Um, so Dr. Farida Pawan is the person in charge of the certificate program. Um, and I believe that she has made a video um, that you should be able to watch to get more information about it. You do have to apply to any cer certificate programs just like you did with the online EDD program. Um, and it also has, you know, the program of studies as well. You do have to complete this before you complete your online EDD program. But some of the classes um, that you would take for the certificate program, you may already be taking for your doctoral program, so I definitely recommend um, checking that out. We encourage you to join our department Facebook page. We post different events, um, conferences, things that um, you know we we want to share with you, as well as there's a online EDD cohort Facebook group that's a private group that you can definitely join. I know they have discussions about, you know, different courses, um, you know, if there's an issue, you know, you can bring it up there and other students who have been in the program um, might be able to answer it if you, you know, don't wanna necessarily talk to the department about it. We also have a YouTube channel that we post orientation videos, um, videos that we record from different events. So definitely go check that out. Uh, we welcome you to Indiana University. Uh, we wish you the best of luck throughout your career here. Um, and feel free to reach out um, at any time.